In this video, I will walk you through the Microsoft Word Home tab and ribbon in depth. Let's get started. So this video is one of a series in which we're gonna look at each of the Microsoft Word tabs and the corresponding ribbons. And I'll walk you through them from left to right. We're gonna cover all of it. And by watching these videos, you will master Microsoft Word, I promise you. So let's focus in this video on the Home tab. And the idea behind the Home tab is Microsoft wanted to put all of the most commonly used tools and options and features here on one ribbon. And as you may already know, each tab, when you click on it, the ribbon changes to reflect what you clicked. So when I clicked on Home, I get the Home ribbon. And each ribbon in Microsoft Word is divided up into groups. We have a clipboard group, a font group, paragraph group, etc. Let's start here at the left with the clipboard group. And to show you this, I'm going to browse down my document to the second page where I have an essay on one of the most important subjects of our time. And let's say I would like to repeat one of the paragraphs. Let's say this paragraph is so important that I want it to be repeated later on. I know that's kind of far-fetched, but I've clicked and dragged to highlight that paragraph. And now I'll go here to the Home tab and in the Clipboard group, you'll see that I have some copy, cut, and paste options. If I just want to copy this paragraph, yes, I could do a keyboard shortcut, which is faster in many cases, but there's also a dedicated ribbon group to help me. I can click here on this symbol to copy, and then I'll just browse down my document. Let's say I want that paragraph to be repeated here. I'll just tap Enter, and then I can go back up to the clipboard group and click Paste. Now, in addition to just a typical paste, I could click the bottom part of this button and choose a specific kind of paste. Do I want to keep the source formatting? The source of this copy paste is up above and it actually has the same exact formatting. So in this case, choosing this option here to keep the source formatting really makes no difference at all. The next option is to merge the formatting. So to kind of take the formatting of the source, but then merge it into the formatting on this document that I'm pasting into. Choosing this option will make the pasted content fit in better with my existing document. We also have a third option to paste the content as a picture. So I just did that, and now look, when I click on this newly pasted paragraph, you can see there's a box around it, and I can right click on it and choose wrap text and then choose to make this paragraph, let's say in front of text, and you can see what happened. This is now acting like a photo or an image and I'll click and drag to shrink that down and I can put that paragraph anywhere I want to. I'm going to click on that paragraph and just tap delete to get rid of it. So that's what this paste option does, paste as picture. There's one other option you can see here, keep text only. When you paste that way, you're just getting the text, no formatting or anything else that would come along with that text. We also have even more options with paste special. I'll click on that and you can see that I can paste as completely unformatted text, even Unicode text and other options. We also have paste link options. If you want to learn more about Paste Special, please watch my other videos on that topic. But for now, I'll just cancel out of that dialog box, and I want to show you that the Paste button also has a default paste option. So I could set the default paste by going here to the advanced settings, and I'll just browse down partway down the list of options, and you can see cut, copy, and paste, when I'm pasting within the same document, I want to keep the source formatting. That's the default, and that makes total sense. I could change that if I want to, though. Pasting between documents, what about that? In most cases, personally, I would want to merge the formatting to change it to the current document that I'm working in. But you can make that decision. And then there's other options as well. Pasting from other programs like Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge or PowerPoint or Adobe Acrobat. Do I want to keep the source formatting? That's the default, but I could change that if I want to. 
I'm going to cancel out of those potential changes, but I just wanted you to know that it is possible to customize how paste works in Microsoft Word. It's a very handy feature. Okay, so in the clipboard group, we've looked at copy, we've looked at paste and its various options. Let's look now quickly at cut and also at this strange looking paintbrush here in the corner. So I'm going to go up here to that paragraph that I've pasted in a second time. Maybe I'm not happy with where it is. I could click and drag to highlight that paragraph. Once it's highlighted, I could go here to the clipboard group and click on this pair of scissors. That will cut whatever I've selected. And now I can move my mouse pointer and the cursor to where I want to paste that paragraph. Maybe I'll tap enter and then I'll just go back up here, click paste, and I've effectively moved that paragraph. Okay, I'm gonna browse back up to the top of page two because I want to show you what this paintbrush is. This is the format painter and it's a very powerful tool inside Microsoft Word. I remember back to when I didn't know what the Format Painter was for, what it did, and I remember doing lots and lots of work in my documents just to get the formatting right. Let's say I wanted to bold this introduction, Maybe I wanted it to be italicized. Maybe I wanted its font size to be just a little bit bigger. So then I would go down to, let's say, Origins of New Wave Music, and I would highlight that text, and I'd try to recreate what I had just done with introduction. So bold, italicize, increase the font. But how much more did I increase the font up here? I'll have to click up there to find out. Oh, 14, and down here I did 12. This is a lot of wasted time. Instead of wasting my time trying to get the format exactly the same as this other part of my document, I should use the Format Painter. The way this works is you click and drag to highlight the text that has the formatting that you want. Now that it's highlighted, just go to the clipboard group and you can click once on the Format Painter or twice on the Format Painter. And I'm here to tell you, in most cases, it's better to double click on the Format Painter. Let me show you the difference. If I just click once, the formatting of this word has now been copied and now I can paste it on, let's say, this phrase here, characteristics of new wave. To paste it, all I do is click and drag and it's going to paste or really paint this text to match the formatting of the word introduction. I'm going to release the mouse button and you can see what happened. This phrase here matches this word perfectly, at least when it comes to the formatting. They match exactly. And you can see why it's called a painter, right? You click on that, and then as you drag across the text, it's like you're dragging a paintbrush across the words. You release that paintbrush, and the changes are made. I'm going to undo that. Okay, but you probably remember I said that double-clicking on the Format Painter is better. Watch what happens if I double-click on the Format Painter. Now, I can click and drag to paint that format, but look, the Format Painter is still selected. Because I double clicked, Microsoft Word remembers the formatting that I want to paste or paint, and I can just continue to paint that same format over and over until my document is exactly the way I want it to be. So I hope that you'll use this Format Painter. It's a very powerful tool and will change how you use Microsoft Word. Okay, there's one other part of the clipboard group that you need to know about, and it's this little tiny button in the lower right corner. This is called the Dialog Box Launcher Button. And there's one here, there's one here, and several other groups also have Dialog Box Launcher Buttons. In my opinion, that name is way too long, so I just like to call it the Launch Button or Launcher Button. So I'll click on this Launch Button and it opens up additional tools or options that couldn't fit here inside the group. In this case, it's showing me the full clipboard. So usually when we copy and paste in Word or any other document, the clipboard is kind of invisible to us. We kind of have to take it on faith that what we've just copied is somewhere and is ready to be pasted. But if you click this Launch Button, you get to see the clipboard. This is something that I've copied and it's ready to be pasted. And if I go to a place in my document, tap enter, I can click and I can paste that in. I'll undo that. So now, because I can see the clipboard, I could actually click and drag to select another part of my document, and then I could click copy, and now both of my copied paragraphs appear here. Let's say I continue to work and I'll decide to copy this paragraph as well. I could just go up here, copy. Now I have three different paragraphs that have been copied. They're on the clipboard 
and I could select any one of these to paste. I could even paste all three if I want to. Okay, in addition to being able to paste any of these three, I can also delete the ones I'm done pasting. I could clear them all out, and there are some options down here in the lower left, and you should look at these if you're interested in learning even more about the clipboard in Microsoft Word. I'm gonna X out of it for now. So that's the clipboard group in Microsoft Word. It's very useful, and many people don't use it to its fullest extent. Let's move on now to the font group. I've already been using the font group, and the font group may be pretty much what you expect, but let's take a look at it. I'll click and drag to highlight the title of my document. Now that it's highlighted, I can go up here to the chosen font, and I'll just click this arrow, and I could browse through to find a different font style that maybe I like better. How about this one? So I'll click on that, and the changes to my title are made. I could also adjust the font size. Let's make this 18 font. If I change my mind about that, I of course could click the drop down arrow again and make another choice, or there are some quick font size buttons here. I could make it slightly bigger, slightly smaller, so that's what these buttons are for. Next to those font size buttons, I have a change case button. And if I click the drop down arrow, I can change the case of this title to lowercase. Now all the text in the title is lowercase. If I click it again, I could make everything uppercase. I could also capitalize each word. And finally, I could toggle the case. So flip everything. If it was uppercase, make it lowercase. If it was lowercase, make it uppercase. Not a good option for me in this situation. Okay, I'm going to undo those changes by holding Control and tapping Z a few times, and let's move on to the next part of the font group. We have a little button here that will clear all formatting. So my title is still highlighted. If I click this button, all of the formatting is stripped out of that sentence, and now I just have plain text, 11-point font. It's not bolded, italicized, or anything. I'm gonna undo that with Control Z. Let's move down to this row of font options. With this button, I can change any highlighted text to be bolded or not bolded. And this is a toggle button, so it goes back and forth. Same with italics. I can click to remove italics in my case or to add it back in. Underlining works similarly, but in the case of underlining, I have a drop-down arrow that I can click, and you can see there are lots of different underlining options double underline, dashed underline, that's kind of a nice look. We also have wave underline. If we click that, you can see what it looks like, and even more. Below, we have yet even more underlines, and you can also change the underlying color. I'm gonna underline in light blue. Next, let's move on to this button, which is strike through. Let's say that I want to remove the word late from this paragraph, but I actually kind of do want there to be a record that it used to be included in the paragraph, it's just crossed out. So with late highlighted, all I have to do is go up here and click on strike through, and now this paragraph will read the 1970s and early 80s, witnessed, etc. But I can see that the word late used to be included in that sentence. All right, I'm gonna highlight introduction again, and let's move on to the next button. This is a subscript. Let's say I want to make a little footnote or something just underneath and after the word introduction. I can just click after the word introduction, and let's say I'll just put a number one there. Now if I highlight the number one, I can click this button to change it to a subscript. In most cases, this will mean I should look down at the bottom of the document for a footnote that's numbered as number one. So that's just one example. But anytime you want to make text or numbers really small and moved down partway, use subscript. The opposite of that is superscript. This is good for various things, including putting in that a number is squared or or cubed or something like that, but there are other reasons that you might want to use subscript or superscript. Okay, next let's look at this button. This gives us text effects and typography. So let's say I want to make the words new wave stand out and kind of pop off this page. With that highlighted, I can come over here to the text effects and typography. I'll click the drop down arrow and I'm gonna select one of these text effects. 
I think that one looks interesting. That one looks pretty good. So I'm going to go with that one. So it applies text effects to my existing text. Notice that if you click the drop down arrow and go below these text effects, you can adjust any of these different features of a given set of text. So you can change its outline color, its shadow, and the way that the shadow is cast. You can change the reflection or add a reflection, glow, number styles, ligatures, stylistic sets. So lots of different options that you have here. So I encourage you to explore those if you'd like to learn more. Next we have highlight. I'm going to click and drag to highlight the best kind of music ever. And then I'll go here to the font group and I'll just click text highlight color. And now synth pop is highlighted in yellow. If I highlight synth pop again, I could go back up here and change the highlighting to a different color or to no color at all. I am just going to stick with yellow. Next up we have font color. Again if I click and drag to select some of my text, I can go back up here and change the color of the words themselves. So I want to make this word to be orange and it's now orange. I'll undo that. In this drop down arrow we also have other options like even more colors and also gradient effects. So feel free to look at these options and experiment with them. Again, there's one other button that you need to be aware of. It's the launch button here in the lower right corner of the font group. If you click on that, you'll get even more font options and they're laid out for you here in this pop-up rather than spread out here on the ribbon. You'll also find some options that are not on the ribbon. For example, you can make text hidden. So I have the word music highlighted. By checking hidden, look what happens when I click OK. The word music is gone. It's actually still there, it's just hidden. And I'll show you how to make it visible again in just a minute. You could of course click and drag and then go back to the launch button and uncheck hidden. Click OK. So that's one way to bring it back. But in a minute I'll show you another way. Back in the launch button for the font group, you'll see a lot of the same options I've already shown you here, but there are some bonus ones like double strike through, but you can also set some of these options to be the default, and I like that you get a preview, so this is a nice set of options that you get when you click the launch button. There's also an advanced tab where you can work on character spacing, character position, even things like kerning. So here we have just some very detailed options to help you make your document look exactly the way you want it to look. For now, I'm going to cancel out of that and let's move right along to the paragraph group. Let's say here in my document, I would like to add a list of some of the key new wave and synth pop bands. So I've typed in a phrase there, I'll tap enter. And then here, I would like to create a bulleted list. So I'll click here to turn on bullets, tap enter, and I get a new bullet and I can type in another band, tap enter. And so bulleted lists are easy to make thanks to this tool in Microsoft Word. Next to the bullet button, we have the drop down arrow that goes with it. This can help us to customize the bullets. So I'm gonna click and drag to highlight my short list here. I'll go back to that drop down arrow and I'll change the bullet style to be an arrow or if I don't like that, how about check marks? How about squares? Whatever you think looks best, you can choose. You can also change the list level. So I could scoot this list over to the right more. I'm gonna undo that, but that's what it means by change list level. And you can see each list level can have its own unique bullet style. We can also define a new bullet. We can choose a symbol for it. How about this? Click OK. Could be a picture, could be a font. You can decide how it's aligned and then just click OK. So there are some great options here in the bullet button. Next, we have numbering. If I click numbering, it will convert my awesome looking bullets into numbers. Similar to the bullet drop down arrow, if I click on the numbering drop down arrow, I get some other options. How do I want my numbers to appear? Do I want a parenthesis on the right? Or do I want a period after the number? Do I want it to be in Roman numerals? So I have all of those different options here. I can also change the list level, similar to what I showed you with bulleted lists. I can define a new number format, again, similar to what I showed before. And you can also set the numbering value. So for example, let's say I tap enter a few times and then decide to continue my list. I could type in another new wave synth pop band. I could then highlight it and then go back up here to the numbering turn on numbering, and in the drop down arrow, I could set the numbering value. 
By default, Microsoft Word figured out that this is the fourth in the list, so it resumed at four. But if I want to, I can force it to start at one again. Click OK, and now it's one. Doesn't make sense in this case, but that is an option. Okay, I'm gonna undo some of those changes. We also have the ability to use this button here to create a multi-level list. Multi-level lists are great for creating an outline. You can have, for example, chapter one, and then heading one, two, three. You can have article one, section one. So you can choose these options or set them yourself, and it works very similarly to what I showed before. So if you want to learn how to do these, you can explore those. I may make a separate video later to show how to do this, but for now, I'll just say it's kind of similar to what I've shown in these two previous buttons. Now having said that, if you just tap enter when you're in a numbered list and then tap tab, look what happens. Microsoft Word automatically helps you to create an outline. So I could type, tap enter, tab again, and I've got an outline set up here automatically inside Microsoft Word. Again, I'm gonna undo that to get back. Okay, next we have some very important buttons. I use these all the time, they're very useful. As you can see, because of my numbered list, some of my text is scooted over to the right, it's indented. But if I click and drag to highlight that chunk of text, I could go up here and click on the decrease indent button. So that scoots my chunk of text to the left. I could also increase the indent by clicking this button. And you can just keep pressing these buttons until you run out of space on the page. So those two buttons are very important, at least to me, when I'm working in Microsoft Word. Okay, next we have a tool that many people don't know even exists. But here in the paragraph group, you can choose to sort your text. So for right now, I've listed these three bands and they're not in any particular order. Simple Minds, OMD, Thompson Twins. If I want them to now be in alphabetical order, all I have to do is choose Ascending, click OK, and look, they've been reordered with almost no work on my part. Let's move on now to this next button. It looks like kind of a paragraph symbol, but what this is, is show hide. So I'm gonna go up here to the top of this second page. Remember, I hid the word music here in this title. If I click this button, it will show me the word music once again. If I press it again, it will hide it. So that's what that's for. In addition to showing hidden text, notice that it shows other formatting features and other things. I'll press it again. Next, we get to a pretty typical, commonly understood option, which is alignment. And we have four different alignment options here in the paragraph group. I can align left, I can align center, I can align right, I can also choose this option, justify. Let's move down to the paragraph itself here, and I'll click and drag to highlight that to help you understand justify a little better. I'm gonna now click that button, and look what it did. It adjusted the paragraph. Now, why? what changed. If I hold my mouse on Justify, you'll see Microsoft Word's explanation. Distribute your text evenly between the margins. Justified text gives your document clean, crisp edges so it looks more polished. So if you look here at the paragraph, without it being justified, it's kind of jagged here at the right. But if I highlight my paragraph again and click Justify, now it's a nice, smooth left edge and right edge. It can look a little better. I'm gonna click and drag to highlight the second paragraph, and let's click here now on this button, line and paragraph spacing. If I click there, I can change the spacing for this paragraph to be 2.0, 2.5, 3.0, or I could just go back to 1 or 1.15. There's also some other line spacing options. If you click that button, you get all sorts of options, and you can see the preview here. There's also line and page break options. So I'm gonna leave it to you to explore that if you're interested. But I also want you to see that you can add space before a paragraph. You can add space after a paragraph. So if you just want a little more of a gap before and after a paragraph, those are some options for you. Okay, let's move on to the shading tool. A lot of people call it the paint bucket, but what this does is it helps me to choose or change the color of the background behind words. So I've clicked and dragged to highlight my second paragraph, and I'll go up here to the shading tool, and I'm gonna shade it a light blue background. I can click away and you can see the result. Okay, our second to last button on the paragraph group is borders. Let's say I want to emphasize 1980s. I'll click and drag to highlight 1980s and I'll click here on borders and then I'm gonna select all outside borders. I'll click 
and look at the result. That helps me draw attention to 1980s. I kind of like that effect. You can also select, let's say, a whole paragraph. Click there to put a box around the entire paragraph. And you can see that there are more options as well. Bottom border, top border, all borders. You can even draw tables into your documents. I'm going to click and drag to draw a table. And if I tab over, it will continue to give me rows in that table. I'm going to undo that. Now, that same button that gives me borders also lets me put in a horizontal line. That's a nice effect sometimes to break up your document so it's not all clustered together. And I've seen many Microsoft Word users hold the Shift key and tap the minus key on the keyboard to create their own horizontal line. And that's fine, nothing wrong with that. But the horizontal line that's in this button here, I think looks a little better and it's quicker, easier to just put that right into your document. There are other options here in the borders button. For example, you can view grid lines if there are any and you can change the borders and shading options, including changing the borders to a dashed effect. You can make the border thicker, and you can apply it to different things, the paragraph, or if you have a highlighted word, or whatnot. Okay, as with past groups, the paragraph group has a launch button in the lower right corner. It gives you some of the same indents and spacing options, like alignment, indentation, and spacing, line spacing, etc. We also have line and page breaks options. We can do page breaks before, keep lines together, keep with next, and there are some exceptions as well. We can also set tabs here by clicking on tabs. And if you're interested in learning about these options, watch my other videos on setting tabs in Microsoft Word and also my other individual Microsoft Word videos. I'm gonna cancel out of that. And it's time now to move on to the styles group in Microsoft Word. Many times when you're working in Microsoft Word, you need to set apart certain text to make it stand out from the rest. A good example of this is a title or heading, maybe a section heading or chapter heading, and this styles group can really help us with that. So for example, if I click and drag to highlight my title, I could just click normal to make it normal text. Now it still has my highlighting and it's got my text effects, but it's just a normal style. If I highlight that same title again, I could switch to no spacing and watch what happens. It just reduces the space between the two chunks of text. I also have heading one as an option. And if I click this arrow here, I get even more options. If I click this down arrow underneath, it gives me many more options all at once. So heading number two, heading number three, title, subtitle, strong. There's lots of good options here. Intense quote, and it's possible to create a style of your own. Style one in this case, I could rename that if I want to. I could click modify and then make some changes. Maybe I wanna base it on heading four, but then make it maybe a little bit bigger. Maybe bold it, underline it, and center it. I could click OK. And now if I go here to my full list of styles, look, I've got a custom style. And I can reuse that over and over. Let's try it out. There it is again. We can also use this button to clear formatting or apply a style. So there's some powerful options built into this button here. Once again, we have a launch button. If we click on that, it shows us all sorts of options that we can adjust for our styles. So explore that if you want even more style options. I'm going to X out of it. And let's move on now to this next group, I guess you could call it. It's really just this one button, editing. If I click on that, I can do a find or a find and replace. And we can also select certain parts of the document. Let's try find. When I click on find, I get this navigation pane that opens up at the left, and I can do a search for one of my favorite words in the English language, synth pop. I type it in and I get a list of results. If I want to jump to one of these results, I can just click on it and the document updates here at the right. Now I'd like to jump up to this part of the document and it jumps up to there. But notice all instances of the word synth pop are highlighted in yellow and this is temporary, of course. As soon as I close the find option, they're no longer highlighted. Okay, now let's try replace. With replace, what we're doing is basically a find and replace. Find what? How about the word synth pop? What if I want to change how that appears in my document? Instead of just all one word, maybe I want to hyphenate it. I'll type in synth, put in a dash, and pop. So this is gonna try to find all instances of the word synth pop 
and replace it with this. I could make those changes one at a time. You can see there's one here. I click replace and it updates it. Or I could just replace all at once. Notice that you can force it to also match the case of what you want to replace it with. So I could put this in all caps if I want to, and there are other options too. I'm gonna click replace all, click yes, all done, 23 total replacements, and I'm done. We also have a go to tab. If I click there, I can go to a specific page, line, section, comment, etc. Now in a three page document or four page document, I don't find this to be very helpful. But what if instead of having just three or four pages, what if my document had a thousand pages? Maybe I'm writing a novel and I need to change something that's on page 950. This is a great way to quickly jump to the right page. I'll close out of that. Let's go back to the editing button because I want you to see that there's also select options. If I click select, I can select all. Everything in the document is selected. Many of you know though that you can just click on the document anywhere, hold control and tap A and it does the same thing. But if you want to use the mouse instead of the keys on the keyboard, you could use select, select all. You can also select objects if you want. You could select all text with similar formatting. Now, it's not gonna work because I don't have any data, but if I click and drag to highlight part of my document and then go up to editing, select, select all text with similar formatting, notice what happened. Every part of my document that's formatted similarly to this got highlighted. So that's a great feature. And then we also have a special selection pane. So there's some really good options here in editing. Let's move right along now to the voice group. And this is a great feature in some versions of Microsoft Word. You may not have this in your version, it just depends. If I click the top part of this button, Microsoft Word will allow me to dictate some text. I'll click there, erasure. And then I clicked this symbol here to stop my dictation. And you can see that Microsoft Word wrote the word erasure for me. I can also choose the bottom half of this dictate button and change it to transcribe. Let's try that out. I'll click transcribe. And this allows me to upload audio or start recording. And then Microsoft Word will make a transcription of that audio. So that's a pretty cool feature that's built in to Microsoft Word, at least some versions of it. Notice that I'm limited to 300 transcription minutes per month. I'll X out of that. Let's move right along to sensitivity. And sensitivity may or may not be useful to you or even usable for you. You can see for me right now it's grayed out. But what this is for, it's for setting the sensitivity level of a particular document based on your company or your organization or your school's policies. So I could set this to be top secret, I could set it to be public information, I could set it to be confidential. There's different options for different organizations and making it clear who should or shouldn't see this document. Again, let's move right along to our next group. This is the editor group and it's just a button. I click editor and I get a panel that opens up at the right and this is like having a virtual editor. Think of like a newspaper and how you have reporters and others writing stories and then an editor may help those writers to improve their writing or make changes to their writing. So you can see right off the bat, I get an editor score. The Microsoft Virtual Editor gives me a 93% on this document. If I click on that score of 93, the editor gives me some suggestions. This could help make the paragraph clearer. I'm just gonna ignore it and it moves on to the next suggestion. I'll ignore that as well. I'm gonna X out of those suggestions, but as you can see, the editor not only gives you a score, but it can help you to improve the writing that's in your document. Next, I can change this from a formal writing style to a casual writing style. Notice that that improved my editor's score. So for the editor, knowing that this is meant to be casual actually improved the editor's opinion of my writing. What about professional writing? That dropped its opinion of it. So what's the purpose of your writing? I'm gonna switch back to formal writing. Next, the editor did find some spelling and grammar concerns. So I can click on spelling, it thinks that this is an incorrectly repeated word. It's not, it's fine. So I'll click ignore and ignore again. I'm gonna X out of the corrections part of the editor and look at grammar. Again, I can change that if I want to or ignore it. 
and I'll X out. There are some other refinements that Microsoft Word might recommend for me. For example, I've got a clarity recommendation here. I can X out of that. I've got a vocabulary recommendation. I can also check for similarity to online sources. So this is a great feature, especially for teachers, but also for students and others who want to make sure that they're not plagiarizing. And if they are using other people's writing, that they're citing their sources. I can also get some document insights or stats. If I click here, it tells me how many words, words per sentence, sentences per paragraph, all sorts of information like that. Click OK. So this editor is really fantastic, and I hope that you have access to it and that you'll check it out. I'm going to X out of it. Okay, our final group on the Home tab and ribbon in Microsoft Word is the Add-ins group. If you click on Add-ins, you can add either a popular add-in or you could click Get Add-ins to see the complete list of Microsoft add-ins. So think of add-ins as being kind of like apps. If you have a smartphone that has apps, you go to the App Store, you search, you find the app you want, you download it or install it on your phone, and now it can enable you to do things. Well, that's what Microsoft Office add-ins are. So for example, I could add in Wikipedia, and so some of the usefulness and functionality of Wikipedia could be accessible from within Microsoft Word. There are some fancier spell checkers than those that come with Microsoft Word. There's an Excel to Word document automation add-in. There's just all sorts of different add-ins. In this case though, I'm just gonna go back to the main add-in button and I want to add a popular add-in, GPT, for Excel and Word. I'll just click Add, and now I get a panel at the right, at least temporarily, and notice that I have now a new group on the Home tab and ribbon. If I X out of this GPT for Excel Word, I can get it back again just by clicking this button, and it's back. Now you may have noticed that I also have an Adobe Acrobat Sign group on the Home Ribbon. This is actually an add-in, so it probably won't show up on your Home tab and Ribbon. I actually added this in by clicking on Add-ins, Get Add-ins, and searching for Adobe Acrobat. So these add-ins are definitely worth exploring. They can add special functionality to your Microsoft Word. Watch for a future video of mine that will focus on add-ins and I'll give you some recommendations for some of the best add-ins to use in Microsoft Word. So we've finished looking at the Microsoft Word Home tab and ribbon in depth. In the future, I'll walk you through the insert tab and ribbon, the draw tab and ribbon, design, etc. We'll go through all of the default Microsoft Word tabs and ribbons. For now though, I hope you found this tutorial to be helpful. If you did, please like, follow, and subscribe. And when you do, click the bell so you'll be notified when I post another video. If you'd like to support my channel, look, creating these videos takes a lot of time and effort, so much editing. If you'd like to support the channel, I'd really appreciate it. And the best way you can do that is by joining the channel as a member. Channel members get special perks, including access to my monthly behind-the-scenes members-only podcast, and also priority response to comments so that when you comment on my videos, I'm much more likely to reply to you. So please consider becoming a channel member. You can also support me by clicking the thanks button below the video, or by supporting me through my Patreon account, or by buying channel merch, and you'll see information about those options in the description below the video. 